Hey, welcome back. And if you're new here, thanks for stopping by. All right, today we're going to be going over our top 10 wall decor inspirational pieces. These pieces, I'm hoping to give you some inspiration if you're looking for wall decor ideas, canvas art, large wall art, whatever you might be looking for. I'm hoping that this gives you some inspiration so that you can go out there and do a DIY for your home. All right, for the first one, I saw this piece at Home Goods and I was like, I can do that, no problem. So I got some dowels from the Dollar Tree. You can always use skewers too from the Dollar Tree if you can't find the dowels, but the skewers are gonna be just a little bit skinnier than the dowels are. I used a hula hoop, you don't have to. I used it just for shape so I can make sure I had the right shape because it was a circular shape and you're just gonna glue them randomly. So you just take a couple pieces at a time, glue them together, stack them up till you get the look that you want. You can do a little bit, you can do a lot. And then I hit it with just some black spray paint. You can do gold, you can do whatever color you want. But I did black, I did two coats of that, let it dry, hung, and that's it. You can hang it with in the little sticks. You don't even have to have an extra piece. And I think it's a great piece of wall decor for only $2. All right, now for the next one. This one I thought was super nice and it's gonna be two parts. I have a whole video up with a longer detail on these two pieces, but we're just gonna go over it real quick. This was the inspirational piece I used for the big one. And I eventually did turn up um, painting it black after the fact because the black did go more with my home. But these were the inspirational pieces that I was using and they were from Pottery Barn. They had these gorgeous pieces, but they were way out of my budget so I went down to Michael's and I got me a canvas on sale I got me some spackling that went on pink and it dries clear not clear it dries white so you can tell once it's dry and I just randomly placed a spackle over the canvas in different areas it came out more of a cream color than a white so then I went over it with just some white paint because I didn't want it to cream and I just went over in random sections again with the white paint and then I let that dry came back in with my gold metallic paint which I love and you can use this effect in painting to do like a marble detail too if you want I just kind of paint it like a vein and then feathered it out so it's just like the first piece that we saw from Pottery Barn there and you just do that. You don't even have to do that. You can keep the crisp lines if you want to, but that's how I did mine. And then once that dried, I mixed two colors of paint together. It was a pink and one was like a mustard color to get the color that I wanted. And then I also later on used those two colors separately in the painting just to give it some different dimensions and texture above the spackle but I painted the sections with that you know and it doesn't have to be perfect because it is a piece of abstract wall art so it doesn't have to be crisp clean you know and then I came back in like I said with the other colors separate and just added a little bit of detailing around the edges and you can do your touch-ups there and then there it is you can even frame this if you want to give it to that extra step but I love this piece and like I said I changed mine to black because it did go with the with my home aesthetic more but I did love it in this color too and this would be great for something for spring too and it was very inexpensive now on to this next one this next one is something that I saw on TikTok a while ago and so I used the same colors that I used in the other one the pink and the mustard and this one is just real simple I made a line straight down the middle because it's like a half and half type thing and that just divided the sections into two sections again doesn't have to be neat because it's not about being perfect with this and then I went on one side with one color and then fanned it out just like I did the other went over the edges because I didn't frame it if you're going to frame it you don't have to do it like that and then I went on the other side with just a straight pink but you could use whatever colors you want you can do this black and white you can do whatever colors would go with your home you don't even have to worry about doing full coverage on it and then I went in with the gold because I love a pop of gold in there and just accented that line in the middle just to give it a little more definition 
as to we're dividing it in the middle and then I laid out my pieces I printed these out but these really the line art you can draw these if you're you know have a good steady hand you can draw these pieces directly on and then you don't have to worry about printing them out and then I just punched holes in the canvas you don't want to do it too close because the canvas is can be a little fragile so you just want to punch the holes slightly apart so that you can take your yarn and loop it through without tearing it. So just make sure you don't punch the holes too close and make them visible so that you can see it when you're doing it. Took my yarn, measured out the yarn about the size of the line art, which is another simple process. You just want to make sure you got enough. You don't want to do too little. You can, but then you have to tie it in the back, whatever but just enough of the yarn and then start it out looping it through once you have it in you tie a knot in the back to make sure it doesn't come through and you're just going to stitch it try to make sure your stitches are even if they're not it's not the end of the world but it's a real simple process and like i said make sure you do the dots so that you can see them all the way through Once you get towards the face part, you'll have to pay real close attention because the lips and the different things like that, you know, you got to make sure you can also draw this with a pencil and erase it after the fact, just so you can get those little details real nice and good. But whatever way works best for you, you can play around with it and practice it on paper. But if you can see the little holes that were there, once you're done with it, I just secured it real good through the back. I just looped it through the other stitches just to make sure rather than just tying the one knot, I wanted to make sure that it didn't come out so I just looped it through the other stitches so that I made sure I didn't have any issues in the end did the other side and this was it and I love how this turned out I left this one the exact same color that it was and I put it in my daughter's room Okay, now we're stepping away from canvas art for right now. And this one is one of my favorites. It's simple. You'll see these wall decor pieces all over the place from Anthropology to Pottery Barn. I've seen pieces in Target that still, you know, are affordable, but they still cost more than what it cost me to do this. The thing of rope only cost me a couple of dollars and then the hot glue and I use paint. So you're just going to wrap around your rope till you get the size that you want. I wrapped it around, gluing it together. Not too much glue because you don't want it to come through on the outside of it. But you'll just do that in section by section till you get to the end. And then you'll just tuck in the end at the back of the piece. So wherever your back of the piece is going to be, you're going to tuck the rope at the back. And then I came in and I painted mine. You can do this with some embroidery thread. And you'll just carefully go through and stitch it through the coils of the rope. But I did it with the paint and on the wall, it looks super fine. No problems. But like I said, if you wanted to take it up to a notch and have it look real high end, you can do it with the thread. Once I did the paint, did all the touch ups, I just added something to hang it in the back. And I just used some rope from the Dollar Tree, braided it till it was thicker. You can also just use a thicker piece of rope, <laughs> which would be a bit easier, but um, braided it so it was thick, you know, to hang this piece because it's not heavy, but it's not super light. Used a lot of glue. Whenever I'm putting the little rope piece on the back to hang it, I use a lot of glue to cover it, let it dry for a good amount of time to make sure it's on there nice and secure. Hang it up and it stays all the time. Okay, so now for this next one, another simple one. I took a hula hoop from the Dollar Tree, cut out a piece of cardboard that I had, the shape of the hula hoop, because the hula hoop is gonna be the base for what I'm doing. Not the hula hoop, the cardboard is gonna be the base for what I'm doing. Made sure everything was still the right size. Use these wood squares from the Dollar Tree. You don't even have to use, well, you, if you're gonna stain it, you're gonna have to use wood squares from the Dollar Tree or from someplace, but you could also just use 
actual pieces of wood say from Home Depot or something like that but Dollar Tree had these so I used these and I'm just placing them around kind of like a puzzle getting the look that I want don't worry about the gaps because you can paint those if you did a glam look with this you could fill it in with some um crystals some different things like that some crushed glass that way to make it glam and then paint the wood a different color you could do this so many different ways but i'm just doing this simple kind of like a boho feel for the way that i'm doing it once i had everything laid out i just hot glued it down to the cardboard and like i said you don't have to worry too much about the gaps because you can paint those at the end or fill them in if you choose to cut around the whole piece to make it you know circular because that's what we needed the wood is so thin you could probably do it with a scissor but um i had a saw stain the pieces of wood and then painted certain parts black i painted the cardboard black because of course you can't stain that and then certain squares of the wood and then this was it took the hula hoop don't believe what anybody says when they say they just spray painted a hula hoop. You have to take that coating off, that little plastic piece off, because it won't stick. And if you want to go another step, you can sand it down to make sure whatever you're putting on there sticks to it also. But you definitely have to take that plastic off if you are going to be painting one of the Dollar Tree hula hoops. Let that dry, stuck it all together, put a hook on the back, and that's that for that one. Now, all of these pieces are great because they are large wall decor pieces, but you can do them on a smaller scale. You can do them even bigger if you want, but I love a piece of large wall decor because it helps with your home because you don't have to worry about doing too much else because a large piece of wall decor can just, you know. This was a set of paintings that I still have in my hallway to this day. I just took three canvases from michaels but you can get canvases now from five and below too painted them because i wanted them to look like a set so i did you know top middle bottom took the same spackle that goes on the pink and then dries the white i didn't wait for the paint to dry because i wanted everything to look kind of muddled together so you can just go over it but you can wait for the paint to dry and then do it that way but then if you go over the black with it after it dries it's going to probably cover up the black so just know that you can take and make a design in the speckle if you want at that point i did it. i just let mine dry as is and you can see it dried that way and then i took paint this is house paint don't take house paint but <laughs> that's the paint that i had at the moment took the paint and then I covered up some of the black because I didn't want it to be too black you know and I didn't want it to be so I just did that and then this is how it looked as is on the wall but you can see it's a little flat and it's missing something so I went to the, the Home Depot and I got these trim pieces to make a frame so you could just make a frame and it kind of looks like a floating frame but it's not how you do a floating frame but if you want to do a budget not even budget but a quick floating frame this is a way to do it and then i just cut the pieces to size and then i painted them with a gold you can stain them and then i just hot glued them on but um yeah that was just that simple you can like i said make the frame separate put the frame on it and then it'll have that even more high-end look but this was quick and simple for me to do and i love the way these turned out and you can see the frame just added what it needed to these pieces because without it it was kind of eh, and boring so framing your artwork is a great way to give it that high-end look without costing you a lot Okay, now for this piece, because I love abstract art, I love canvas art, I love all the different things. This piece was really inspired by a piece that I saw at Crate and Barrel, and 
they did it a little differently. I'm showing you a quick and easy way to do it, but you can do it just like the piece I saw at Crate and Barrel and make yourself an exact dupe. But um, I just used a hula skirt from the Dollar Tree and a old painting that I had tried to do something with didn't turn out the way that I wanted it to turn out. So I'm just gluing the hula skirt with the string part on the back and then just pulling the pieces individually because it's harder to get them to lay as you want them to if you're doing it you know all at one time but doing that and then you can also staple it too if you want to do that you can staple it but I went through did that so that everything was nice and flat and once that all dried I did staple you see the other side just to make sure it was secure because it was a lot of it then you can leave it like this if you want. But to make the crate and barrel type piece, what they had was like a weaving. But I didn't have enough of the hula skirt left to do the whole thing. So I just did one big weave in the front. But what you would do is just take it just like how I did the front the first piece with the individual pieces. You would take it and go in and out with just a couple of pieces at a time as opposed to going in and out with the whole thing there but either way I think it turned out great and it's a great piece it gives me to that um that ethnic like you know you go to home goods now and they have those um pieces that from all over the world whatever a little travel piece it gives me that vibe and I do like it and then I just took the back and I stapled it all done no probs and I think this was a great piece of wall art that you can do and it's easy simple and inexpensive now next on our list of our 10 wall decor pieces that you can do i had this black canvas it came in a set of two and again i got it from michael's but you can just use a white canvas too and paint it whatever color you want and i have these placemats that i got from walmart i have so many of these placemats that i still have ideas for them but um i took the placemats that I got from Walmart and I'm just going to place them on there hot glue it I've only used one placemat for this canvas because it is a slim canvas so it didn't take that much but you hot, hot glued it on you can also staple it like I said you can do whatever you want to adhere it to the thing stapling it you would just have to you know touch up with a little bit of paint to cover up the staples on the side there but hot glued it down, trimmed off all the excess that was on the back and let it dry. I did use the excess that was on the side there to add on to the piece. You can leave it like this. You can add more, you can add less. And that's the good thing about doing your own wall decor is that it's yours, you own it. You can do whatever you want and it'll sure fit in with your home decor. Now next on our top 10 list, we're going to be using the same canvas that we used from the two pack and I'm just taping off so that I can have lines. I ended up changing my, my mind at the end, but that's a good thing about doing your own wall decor is that you can change your mind and I love a good abstract piece because it doesn't have to you know be perfect because it's abstract okay but i did tape off and i went in with my gold paint and i just patted it in rather than stroking it in because i wanted it to have that look so i always like to i do that a lot with the dabbing of the paint as opposed to this stroking of the paint and then i went in with some acrylic white paint and i did the middle of it the same way that i did the gold paint on the outside if you go over it's fine you can just touch up like i did there with the gold you could just touch it up and that's perfectly fine once i was done i took off the tape and um i don't know i just sometimes i look at something after the fact and i just feel like it just needs a little more loving 
you know? So <laughs> I changed my mind, but um, you can see at some points I did because my hands were still wet with the paint. I had a little bit of faux pas on the black area, but that's fine. I just touched it up with the acrylic, with some black acrylic paint. And that was perfectly fine. And again, you don't have to use um, the black canvas. You can use a different. So then I came in after I saw it and I was like, let me change it up. And I came in with a little bit of black and some white paint. And I just filled in that whole square. So the taping go off was irrelevant. <laughs> I could have just drew a square. And then I decided I wanted to take it all the way up with the gold. And so I took it all the way up. And then I was like, okay, let's do the reverse canvas on this because I love a good reverse canvas and framed artwork just has a different look. So I took off the canvas, stapled it on to the back of the frame and then cut off the excess. And then this is how it turned out. Okay, now on to our next, and you can see I love working with canvas art because it has a frame already that you can use to do a reverse canvas and you don't have to worry about that. But you can always just leave the canvas as is and then frame it again, which gives you that floating frame look. But this was a Pottery Barn dupe because I saw these palm fans for Pottery Barn is $400. And I was like, I can make that. So I took and I removed all the staples from my canvas and painted it and then just took newspaper folded it and cut it into kind of a half circle but it's not a half circle because it has the peak at the top and then just folded it real thin like an accordion to make the fan to the, um, the palm leaf so it's just like making a paper fan but I just did it you know real thin and then once I was done with that you'll have a little paper fan basically you have a paper fan that you can open up and use as the palm leaf I did fold both of my pieces at the same time and then you just gather them together at the bottom you know you can glue it I used masking tape to put mine together because you can paint the masking tape with no problem and then I did a bit of cutting if you want it to really, really look like the Pottery Barn one, you can go in there individually with each peak, cut it down to a real narrow peak. If you understand what I'm saying, I'm thinking about doing it again to show you exactly how to make it look exactly like the Pottery Barn one. But um, I think you get it, what I'm talking about, right? And then I just spray painted the paper with different spray paints i did a gold and a black laid it out to see how it looked took the canvas you can see another failed art project took the canvas stapled it on used the other side and glued the fans down and that was it i had my pottery barn dupe all right so that was it for today's top 10 let me know what you thought about the wall decor and i will see you in the next one